Well, I don the best I can, I want my crown. Yes, I've done the best I can, I want my crown. Mais j'attends de revoir Kevin Coyne. Ça fait très longtemps que je n'ai pas vu. Je ne sais plus exactement. La première fois que je l'avais vu, c'était à la Pergola, à Codéran. Et c'est un des concerts qui m'avait le plus marqué, de tous ceux que j'ai vus. Et puis j'ai dû le voir il y a quelques années, mais je ne me rappelle plus exactement dans quelles circonstances. Voilà, donc euh, je ne raterai jamais un concert de Kevin Coyne à Bordeaux. Kevin Coyne, j'écoute ses disques depuis longtemps et euh, j'adore ce qu'il fait. Quoi. Bon, euh, il se trouve que je l'ai vu la dernière fois il y a plus de 20 ans. Et, euh, donc là, j'avais très envie, euh, j'ai pu me libérer pour, le, pour venir le voir. La dernière fois qu'il est passé à Bordeaux, je travaillais et malheureusement, je n'ai pas pu y aller. In France, here, where I'm playing tonight, it's, uh, they don't always understand the text, but there's always a very emotional response. They like uh, to tragedy, to comedy, to a sense of the ridiculous. They're very good at that. Per but the best in Europe, I think, audiences at responding to feeling. The language barrier doesn't really work in the case of Kevin. Well, uh, some, first of all, some uh, members of the audience still understand, and understand English uh, enough to uh, follow uh, what Kevin means and uh, the humor that is uh, his particular kind of humor. And uh, more than that, I think that it's so visual too. And uh, the feeling, they can understand it, can feel what he was expressing too. I've done the best I can, I want, I want my crown. Yes, I've done the best, the best I can, I want my crown. Everybody knows they know. That I have got some get up and go Done the best I, I can I, I want my crown I was always a painter I started uh, uh, I was at art school in Derby for four years And uh, took uh, examinations And I did it all properly So therefore I suppose I was a painter first But I mean I was into music very early on too Because my brother and both My brother and sister are musicians My brother is dead now as a jazz musician and uh, introduced me to a lot of uh, rather more sophisticated music at a very young age. So I was singing on stages from a very early age. From I was in rock bands in the 50s, so uh, I was doing that. But I was also, I wanted to be a painter, I wanted to draw, and I've managed to do both, really. I'm not so uh, obsessed with trying to... Uh, paint things as they really are. I want to, it sounds pretentious, but I just want to paint what's inside my head, really, and find uh, a simple and a simplistic, it's more simplistic as, as the years go by. I'm always intrigued by the darker side of life, as, as you noted. It's not always easy to talk about your work, really. I'm not always sure whether I like it very much, but, uh, you know, that's normal, I think, if you're honest. Uh, this, which is rather strange. I did a whole series about Caspar uh, uh, Hauser, uh, the, the was it the 19th century guy who was found in Nuremberg and, and was uh, uh, eventually murdered, uh, I think, in Ansbach. But it's a story, local story, really, to Franconia and to Bayern. So I did an exhibition about this guy. I'm very much of a kind of a loner in a very public situation. You know, I'm, uh, I think my job as a, as a singer and a performer requires me to meet a lot of people and often to be 
in a group of large, a larger group of people, but I often feel extremely alone and uh, I, that's just my temperament, I guess. But my work isn't always sad and gloomy. I mean, I have a, I suppose some would say a rather perverse sense of humour, but I, I find li life rather hard, I think, a lot of the time, but that's, that doesn't make me alone. I mean, <laughs> millions of people find it the same way. Since I moved here to Nuremberg, I, I have been rather an outsider in some respects and I rather enjoyed it and painting and starting to paint again uh, coincided with that feeling of uh, finding myself again as I really am and not this uh, party being that I used to be, you know, always drinking at the bar and uh, I stopped drinking ten years ago. This has a lot to do with the way I feel now. Any artist who's uh, really honest would say that the, the art they do, whether it's painting or music or or whatever, or dance or something, would say it is partly therapy. I mean, if you really do it well, you're getting something out from inside, and uh, it's very necessary for me to uh, explain myself to myself regularly. So, I mean, with painting, I, I, I treat it very much in a professional way, uh, in the sense that I do it every, as often as possible, almost every day, a, a drawing. Uh, I have to do it, really. I, uh, what else can I do? It's what I do. Everybody knows they know that I've got some get up and go. Done the best I, I can I, I on my crown. Put it on my head, my big, big head. That is up in heaven, uh, and it surely did. Mommy's got her crown. She'll send it right down On a big pink cloud With a voice so loud With little white hands I think my mama understands That I've done my best That I've done my best If you're not necessarily aiming to sell a product, if you're not making something which is as a market which has been created by commerce and by money, uh, you, uh, you know, if you're not pleasing this audience, you know, obviously, then you're going to have some troubles, you know. You, you're going to be isolated, you know. Your market, or my market, will, I believe, continue forever, you know, because people will, long after the Madonnas are forgotten, I believe that the, somebody will say, oh, yeah, Kevin Coyne did that, you know. And I've I've done many things which are later have become sort of commercial things. I mean, in many ways, I was one of the first punks, really. I mean, I did uh, songs which later, uh, and the, the spirit and power and enthusiasm behind them was picked up by the, the punks, by John Lydon and people. Uh, Malcolm McLaren said that not long ago on an MTV interview, you know, that I was one of the influences of that period. So something comes of it, even if I didn't get all the money, you know. What would I do with all the money anyway? I think for a very commercially orientated uh, record label, I am difficult because uh, uh, if you're not careful, you get drawn into being something which you're not, you know, dressing in a way which is not necessarily the way you want to dress and uh, writing lyrics for an imagined audience which uh, uh, doesn't nat naturally reflect the way you really feel. And uh, I've, I mean, I, I, as I said earlier, I do these things to reflect the way I really feel. I mean, I want to, it's like therapy for me uh, to some extent. And if I don't get this uh, uh, input or uh, output or whatever, or buzz from it, then I'm, uh, you know, it's a waste of time for me. Rock and roll is rebel music, you know, it's, it's rebel music and it should, uh, not consciously always, but it should reflect uh, you know, a lively mind and a, 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 there should be a touch of anarchy or a lot of anarchy in there and all the best popular music. It's not classical music, it's not uh, folk music, it's a very special kind of music which requires a very special kind of anger and a very special kind of honesty. I never saw myself as an old hippie. I couldn't identify with that uh, period as much as I could with the punk period which was in the in the 70s, where, where it wasn't aggressive enough for me, and uh, 
it was a, a little bit uh, too middle class for me. I was I always regarded myself as a, a son of the working class, and so consequently, uh, I couldn't identify too much with, uh, you know, uh, the Grateful Dead and uh, you know and all this. Not just the Grateful Dead, but the whole, you know, Sergeant Pepper scene and and uh, the Rolling Stones and the uh, Satanic Majesty's Request and all this. I found all this incredibly boring. I like I like the old fashioned rock and roll, really, and I still do. Actually, it's still my favourite music. It's uh, you know, Fats Domino or somebody is much more will always be much more interesting than John Lennon. I think my mama understands that I've done my best. That I've done my best. I was here in Nuremberg. I had no money. I'd lost pretty well everything. I was still doing gigs, still carrying on, but I was living on a very basic level. I'd lost my family. Mainly, uh, almost, well, I'd say because of uh, drink. And uh, consequently, something had to be done. I had to either go lower and finish up in dead in a corner on the street somewhere or stop and try and find a new way. And uh, I did this and uh, best thing I ever did. Otherwise I wouldn't be here now, I don't think. That I've done my best. That I've done my best. In the 90s I started to publish books and uh, well, I hope to publish more. I think I've published four up to now and um, mainly short stories and, and things like this. But. Uh, I love writing and it's something I would like to have more time for. It's in some ways the hardest discipline of all because you need a lot of time and a lot of silence to do it right. That was a book I really wrote for my wife who was uh, wanted me to write uh, something about teddy bears. As you can see, there's many of them around. Somehow we've acquired a collection over the years. I, it's getting a bit out of control now. The, the whole house is controlled by bears. Well, these are some of the drawings. I think the drawings are very important, really, because, you know, I, uh, they've got a sense of humour. Some, sometimes the paintings appear a little dark, but, uh, you know, like the title of this is Mother Just Walks. Drawing. I enjoy it. The Man with a Mouse on His Hand, Nuremberg, 1988. Or Mystery Woman, Nuremberg. So, you know, people I see in Nuremberg, People I remember from my childhood, people I remember from working in uh, mental hospitals, doing social work, all the things I did in the past. Serial killers, suicidal people, and Roy Orbison in Nuremberg, <laughs> 1995. I mean, I wouldn't like to emphasize too much the sadness in my head. There's a lot of humor in there too, in what I do. And I think if you see a live performance, you'll see that there is, I try to contrast the tragedy with the happy aspect or the crazy aspect of life. Oh, I'm a little bit depressed tonight. I had a message from my mother. She said, Kevin, come home. Sad really, but she's been dead for nearly eight years. But... I'll try to get home tomorrow, Mother, if you can hear me, because I know you love me. I'm sorry I wasn't the good Catholic you wanted me to be, but nevertheless. Home is very good when you're on the road and you've got no, uh, you know, you're staying in hotels and you have a fantasy of this place where you can relax and, uh, and I have this here, but uh, after two weeks, if you've been on the road as long as me, you get restless and, uh, I'm already getting restless now. I think the last gig I did was on the 90th of December, so I think I'd do one at the weekend. Uh, so I think it's time uh, to move. Sometimes I don't like it. I've got this fantasy, well, I'm older now and I should stay around at home and relax in front of the TV, but uh, home for me is kind of giving in, really. But it's nice to have a home for two weeks, I, I guess. That's, that's what I would say about that. But... Uh, Travelling around is, seems to be my life, and there's a reason for it, I think, because I'm always searching, and I like to search. That I've done my best. 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 That I've done my best.
done my best and I've done my very best always do my best and I want my crown Merci, merci beaucoup. I mean, things could change anyway, you know. Some, you could have a freak number one hit, you could. But I think I know how to handle it now. I would still try very hard to remain the same as I am now. <laughs>